Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Shumari TV. It's great that you're with us again. What a beautiful morning. It's about an hour and a half after sunrise, so it's still beautiful and fresh. Animals are still moving around. There's been a lot of activity in the nights. So I'm looking at the road as I'm driving, and there's a lot of tracks and activity. So I hope you enjoy joining me this morning as I head out. And let's go see what we can find. So about a minute ago, just higher up on the ridge behind me, I got long distance visual of a very nice white or light colored shiny object moving into a bush. I grabbed my binox quickly and just managed to catch the, the end of it and it looked like a black rhino. So we, there we go, there we go. And yeah, that's a black rhino. So we are super lucky. Once the heat of the day picks up, these guys generally move into thicker bush. How awesome is that? So you can see a little bit smaller than the white rhino, slightly smoother, and a much rounder little barrel shaped head where the white rhino has such a long square shaped head and you can see that very prehensile lip that it uses to selectively prune off the little bits of twigs and leaves so a much more compact animal than the the white rhino but way more cantankerous generally at the first sign of you on foot they'll come and investigate so they they are what we term a lot more aggressive i do tend to think it's a little bit more nervous so one of the things that can be a bit deceptive when they're busy walking is the head can be a little bit lower which from a distance can give it a, a white rhino appearance so it's always good just to double check these things because if you are on foot and want to approach a black rhino is not not the easiest animal to deal with on foot. Generally, once they are charging, white rhino will generally veer off or, or you can actually quite easily get them to stop, but the black rhino tend to actually follow through with the charges, so you have to be very careful with them on foot. Well, there, she's just moved into this little clump of thickets over here so I'm not going to push her. A black rhino are notorious for being a bit grumpy. If you overstay you're welcome. So we're going to move on but an incredible sighting to see her out in the open and so relaxed like that is amazing. Brilliant. Our guests always ask us is there a color difference between the black rhino and the white rhino? Or how do they get their names? Why are they called that? The colour of both animals is very, very similar. In fact, it can actually change quite substantially depending on the substrate that they're busy mud bathing and, and sand bathing in. They'll take on the colour of that, of that soil. And sometimes we'll find very red rhinos. In this instance, it's a, a very white black rhino. If you look at the soil around us over here, it's almost a light whitish grey mud that they're mud wallowing in. So that'll give her that very, very light color that I saw from such a far distance off. One of the theories, and this is, this is where you can only speculate, is uh, one of the most plausible theories is the, the early Dutch settlers came across the white rhino, and they called it Veit Mont Renoster. And the Veit means wide, it translates to wide. The British weren't able to pronounce Veit and it became white. And in so doing, you now had this the other one was then obviously called the black. The correct terminology is a square-lipped rhino and a hook-lipped rhino, but for all intents and purposes, black and white rhino is also fine.
Alrighty, so as we've come out of this bush line onto this open area, I've got some visual of some white rhinos ahead over here. Uh, it, was, it was great getting that black rhino earlier on, but it's going to be even better now that we can do a quick comparison and I'll be able to show you exactly the differences between black rhino and white rhino. So you can see that much bigger rectangular shaped head that the white rhino possesses. Very blocky, very flat mouth at the bottom. You can see as he's busy grazing, that square mouth allows him to take in a lot more grass. Prehensile lip would be great for the black rhino to be able to selectively pick whatever leaves and twigs he wants. You can see the, the back is a different shape as well, much uh, straighter back on top over here with the white rhino. And skin color pretty much identical. So white rhino are territorial, in other words the males, the big territorial males will hold a territory, they use rhino middens to mark the territory and they'll defend it against all other dominant males. Uh, the nice thing about white rhinos is they're very tolerant towards submissive males, so if a, another male white rhino, even if he's territorial somewhere else but needs to come into his territory to access water or food, as long as he's submissive, completely submissive, and he doesn't challenge the male in any way, he'll be, uh, he'll be known as a satellite male and he'll be tolerated. As you can see here, this is a, a dominant bull just going up to that one and making sure he knows I'm the dominant one there. A little bit of horn rubbing, it's no major aggression. You can see the ears going backwards on the, on the furthest one, moving backwards a little bit. So just, just in, ensuring that everyone knows he's the dominant male. You can see there's a, a red billed oxpecker on that rhino's face. <laughs> Gone into the nostril a little bit uh, as it's busy picking all those ectoparasites out. Those oxpeckers are two very beneficial parts or relationships that they build up with the rhinos. Number one, they obviously clean them of ectoparasites, picking all the ticks off of them. Uh, but number two, it's also an early warning system. So if that oxpecker gets uh, threatened or gets a fright in any way, uh, it'll fly off and give an alarm call. Those rhino then know that there's some form of danger in the area and it'll put them on alert. It's, a, it's an alarm call that as, as walking guides, that's something that we listen to when we're walking in the bush because that's our early warning system as well to tell us there's potentially large herbivores uh, ahead. It's actually quite interesting. There's two different birds over there and, and what we would call two different types of ecological relationships. The oxpecker, is a mutualistic relationship with the white rhino. Because it's eating the parasites off of the rhino, it benefits the rhino. But there's also a fork-tailed drongo, the little blackbird sitting on the rhino. That's a commensalistic relationship. That fork-tailed drongo is being kind of quite sneaky. He's using the rhino to his benefit, but he's not giving the rhino anything else beneficial. He's not eating any parasites off of the rhino per se. But as the rhino is busy walking through the grass, it will disturb a whole bunch of grasshoppers and insects and the fork-tailed drongo then swoops down and picks it up. So he's using the rhino's movement to get himself a free meal. So that's what we'd call a commensalistic relationship. It's only benefiting the, the fork-tailed drongo. So one of the sad aspects about what we've been facing for the last few years is the increasing poaching and pressure that rhino have been uh, facing. South Africa, Southern Africa, globally, it's been, it's been really bad the last few years. I can guarantee as we're sitting here watching these rhino, uh, I'm not too sure where, but we've got the anti-poaching guys busy watching us. Well, there's a few of the key main differences between black rhino and white rhino. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.
everyone, my name is Andrew Kearney. I'm the Ranger Manager at Shamari Private Game Reserve. I just want to take a moment to say thank you very much for all the support and feedback that we've been getting on our brand new channel, Shamari TV. We appreciate all the feedback and we're loving the support. If you haven't followed us yet, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. Stay tuned for our next episode and I'll see you right here at Shamori Private Game Reserve.